How to convert CIDR notation to decimal based subnet mask. That's what we're going to go over in this video. We're going to show you how you can use your hands to do this. Now, there's a link in the description below to another video that shows a nice chart to make this easier to visualize. But essentially what you need to know is this is going to cover your one, your first CIDR notation, number one, all the way to 32 to the 32nd CIDR notation. Okay. So we're going to start with our fingertips. All right. And then we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's going to be our first octet. Then we're going to go down to our knuckle and it's going to be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's going to be our second octet. So that's going to be our, our second position. So, uh, the first octet and for this one, for this, uh, subnet mass that we're hovering over is 248. The second octet is dot zero, the third is dot zero, and the fourth is dot zero. All right. So if we want to get our third octet with our fingers, we just, we stopped on 16 on our knuckle here. So we go over and we go, all right, 17 is going to be the start of our third octet. So as you can see, if you ever forget where your octet begins or starts, you can just pull up your knuckles. And there you go. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's the end of our third octet, which means that our fourth octet. So this last placeholder here, in this case, I'm hovering over 252, this fourth octet, if that ends with 24, then that fourth octet, sorry, notation must be 25, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So there we have our cider notation range from, from one to 32. Now, how do we get the actual value uh, for that octet, for that subnet mask? Well, binary, in, in our case, is working in multiples of two. So if you could just imagine somewhere on the, the base of your hand, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, then you've got your multiples of two. And those line up with your fingers, forming, if you will, a hand chart or a handy chart, for lack of better words, right? So kind of a play on words, we've got our handy little chart, we can count our cider notation, and then see what power of two it lines up with. Based off our one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128 values that we're imagining down here. Now, again, if this is a little obscure for you, uh, we've got a video in the description below that actually shows this chart with the numbers on it in a friendly way. Go check that out if you need it. But in this video, what we want to do is go through some practice challenges. So let's get into those. What we've done is we have navigated over to landtechjobs.com. And then underneath this resources tab, if we go down to memory tricks and mnemonics, you're going to see some subnetting tools. So once you, uh, once you navigate there, try and find the CIDR2 decimal base subnet mass quiz. And let's get started. Let's try a few of these. So how does this work in practice? Here we are. We have a question that says, what is the subnet mask for forward slash 18 in decimal notation? Now, the more you do this, the faster you're going to get. And eventually you're going to realize that uh, your, your break points uh, can be found on your first finger. Okay, so that's going to be 1, 9, 17, 25. And based off of that, you can figure out, without having to count all the way across your fingers and knuckles, where you're actually at and what, you know, what range you're in. Okay, so if it's 1, 9, 17, and 25, well, 18 is less than 25, but it's greater than 17. So that must mean, in this case, that must mean that I am in that third octet range. And if I'm in that third octet range, I don't have to count all the way from my fingertips down to 18. But in this case, to keep it simple for this first problem, let's count all the way. So let's assume we don't remember our starting ranges for each octet, our one, eight, uh, I'm sorry, one, nine, 17, and 25. Let's say we don't remember that. Let's say we have to count all the way. So we just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's our first octet, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
That's our cider notation for our second octet. All right, 17, 18. So now we're in this placeholder and we just gotta figure out what power of two, what multiple of two that tracks down to. Okay, so if we just envision our multiple twos down here, we got one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. Okay, so now what I need to do, knowing I'm in that, in that third octet, I need to subtract 256 from 64, okay? So what I like to do, just to uh, keep this simple for these videos and just kind of uh, provide a visual aid, is pull up a calculator. And in our case, what we're gonna do is do 256 minus 64. And that gives us 192. And we're in that third placeholder. We know that because we stopped here on this knuckle. So first octet, second octet, third octet. If I go and I find that third octet, I can find that third octet right here. So again, what we've done is we have said, all right, our octets start at 1, 9, 17, 25, and I can count all the way across until I get to 18, or I can skip and do the shortcut and I can say, okay, 17 is the third octet here, which means 18 must be here. Now I just need to figure out what power of two 18 falls over, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and I subtract that number from 256. So we go 256 minus 64, that gives us 192, and it's gonna be that third octet, first, second, third octet. So that is gonna be our question, All right? If we selected another one, it would say try again. Well, let's get a different problem. In this case, it's 25. Well, we've already discussed that 25 is going to be our fourth octet. In fact, it's the start of our fourth octet. And we can find that by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the first octet, beginning of second octet, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, end of second octet, beginning of third octet, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, of third octet, beginning of fourth octet, 25. So I know 25 is right here. It's in that fourth octet. I just need to figure out that multiple of two. You will start to remember what those are just naturally. But in our case, we if we have to count it out, we can do one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So we subtract 128 from 256. And if we do 256 minus 128, we get 128. So our answer is again, this first one up here at the top. Let's do a new question. Let's do what is the sudden mask for forward slash eight in decimal notation? Well, if we do forward slash eight, it's gonna be right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we just need to figure out what the power of two is gonna be, starting with one. So we just subtract one from 256, which is gonna give us 255. Okay, 255, and we're again, we're in that first octet, so it should be 255.0.0.0. All right, let's do another one. We've got forward slash 26. Now again, we can remember our starting points or our break points that open up the new octets. We can remember 1, 9, 17, 25, and we know that 17 is uh is lower than 26 we know that 25 is lower than 26 so we know that we're in our fourth octet and we know it starts at 25 25 26 okay what's that fall over well that falls over the 64th placeholder 1 2 4 8 16 32 64. so we do 256 minus 64 gives us 192 and we're in that fourth placeholder. So we should end with 192. 255.255.255.192. Okay, let's do another one. In this case, it's going to give us forward slash one. So forward slash one is right here, right? So it's the beginning of our, um, 
It's the beginning of our first octet. But what multiple two is that? Well, we got one, two, four, eight, 16. We've got 32, we've got 64, and we've got 128. Well, what's 256 minus 128? Should be 128, right? 256 minus 128 gives us 128. And because we're in that first octet, our answer is gonna be 128.0.0.0. Let's do another one, forward slash 15. Well, where do our breakpoints start? We know, and we can remember, just four numbers, we can remember where the octets start. In our case, we know that the first octet starts with a cider notation of one. The second octet starts with a cider notation of nine. The third octet starts with a cider notation of, what would that be? Nine plus eight, which would be 17, because there are eight placeholders, right? In each octet, eight bits, if you will. So we've got um, 17. Well, 17 is more than 15, okay? So we know that it must be in this, it must be in that second octet, right? It must be on that first row of knuckles. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's our first octet. We do our second octet, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's this, it's this um, placeholder that we're looking at. So what multiple of two are we gonna subtract from 256? We got one, two. So we subtract two from 256, which should give us 254. And because we're in our second octet on that first knuckle, so fingertips are your first octet, second knuckle, start your second octet. We've got 255.254.0.0. Let's do one more. I feel like we've already done 32. Forward slash 16. Let's do forward slash 16. So I can count these out to figure out what placeholder we're working with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. First octet, start of second octet, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's one way I can get to 16. Alternatively, I can remember that it's one, nine, 17, 25, right? So we just go one, add eight, nine, add eight, 17, add eight, 25. That's how I can remember the breakpoints and the starts of the octet. Well, if it's 1, 9, 17, then I know that it's not going to be in that third octet because, well, I mean, 16 is less than 17. So it must be in that second octet because the second octet starts with 9 and ends with 17, right? And if, it, if the third one ends with 17, it's got to be that last placeholder, which is 16. And what's the multiple of that what does that line up with on our hand chart what lines up on our imaginary number of one remember because our multiples of four are or of two our multiples of two are one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight okay so one minus two fifty six equals two five five and we're in that second octet so it's going to be two five five dot two five five dot zero dot zero we have more tools here on LandTechJobs.com. It costs less than a cup of coffee, and you can practice a variety of subnetting problems. For instance, you can practice getting the network address of a subnet. You can practice getting the first host address. What's going to be your first for your first host in that in that subnet? You can practice getting your last host broadcast address, and even the next uh, address just by going through this tool. It is mobile friendly, so you can access this from your phone. Um, it is, you are essentially able to use it on a mobile device. I know this says desktop only, but we've since adapted this such that it is possible to study on the go with this tool and practice subnetting. Additionally, we have ethernet wiring quizzes. So one thing that you have to know for your Network Plus exam or that you may get asked on the Network Plus exam is the pinout for an ethernet cable. And with this tool, you can practice dragging and dropping the different uh, color codes where they need to go. Now, um, there are different options here. Um, obviously, uh, you can do easy, you can do hard, you can practice the 568A standard or the 568B standard. And then in addition, we have little uh, fun mnemonic based tools that you can uh, use to practice uh, your port numbers. And, you know, we've got a little video that's only 60 seconds on how to remember 
port 80. Um, we've got a little drag and drop quiz here uh, to remember the mnemonic for port 80. Once you get into the online course, it gets a little more in depth. Um, so for instance, ports 143 and port 993, we just, we found the best video that we could possibly find on the internet and we placed that here. Um, highly recommend this channel, uh, check it out. And then what we've done is we've essentially just created a little story um, that you can read. It talks about the small town once upon a time. And it's a story that uh, will hopefully help you remember and associate ports 143 and 993 with IMAP. And of course, uh, another way you might be able to remember that port number that 993 uh, is used for IMAP and it's the secure version of IMAP is to remember James Bond's Porsche, which was, the, which was of the 993 generation of Porsches. It was a 911 career, but it was, but it was of the 993rd generation. And in that way, you might remember, okay, you know, a spy is most likely gonna try and keep things secure. James Bond drove that 993rd generation Porsche. IMAP used 993, okay? Um, now, 143 was, it's the unsecure port for IMAP. Uh, it's not IMAPs, it's not IMAP over SSL, it's just IMAP. And back in the day, people would use the words, I love you to say, um, you know, to say I love you on a pager, but, um, you know, they couldn't actually use the physical words to do that. So they had to use a code. Uh, I'm not really explaining this the best way, but essentially 143 uh, was a code to say I love you back in the day as a pager. So there's only one digit in the word I, there's four digits in the word love, and there's three digits in the word you, right? Y-O-U is three digits, L-O-V-E is four digits, and I is one digit. So people, whenever they had pagers back in the day, they would type 143 and that's how they said, I love you. But you can remember that that was the unsecure or insecure port for IMAP because pagers were not secure. Pagers were notoriously hackable. Um, uh, they were super uh, vulnerable uh, and it was just not the best way to send messages if you, if you cared about security and privacy. Um, anyone could compromise your messages if they wanted to. So we try to use, uh, essentially science-backed memory tricks, um, correlation, the correlation effect. Uh, we try to um, reinforce uh, different things as you go through this course. And of course, I recognize that I'm not the best teacher and you're gonna get tired of hearing my voice over and over. So this course does not just contain my videos, but it also contains some of the best videos that I've found online. Just kind of give you a different spin and mix it up every now and then. Um, so it's a curated course. Uh, it's not complete. We've got the first section of the exam objectives on the website and by paying for the course, you're helping support the build out of it. Uh, you can see we stop at 1.6 of the exam objectives, but I think this is probably the hardest portion of the exam, that first section, because you have to learn subnetting in that first section. You have to learn about the Aussie model. We've got a mnemonic for that. Um, we have even got a little tool for that as well. Uh, and then in addition, in addition to that, you also, um, you have to remember your port numbers. And so, as you just saw, we've got uh, different ways for you to remember your port numbers in here. Um, so trying to keep the learning fun, guys, trying to keep it exciting, mix it up, keep it different, and then trying to provide tools like these subnetting tools and these tools to remember your wiring standards, all for just the cost of a coffee, a cup of coffee uh, each month. You can cancel at any time. You don't have to keep it. You can log in and find out you don't like it. Um, and then in addition, uh, we've got... Anki flashcards that you can download. Uh, you can download, download that flashcard deck, download it to the Anki app on your phone, which uses space-based repetition uh, to reinforce those concepts, uh, active memory recall, the rest, things that are proven to help solidify things in your memory. Um, you can also print out those flashcards and cut them out if you want. We've got a printable for that. And then of course I've got the ebook, which is on Amazon. Um, and it's a pretty lengthy ebook. So now you're talking about I think it's 138 pages uh, worth of content uh, in the ebook. So access to all of this, guys, landtechjobs.com. Check it out. It's $4.59 monthly. People are saying they like it. They're saying it's worth a few bucks. Um, check it out. I have to say, for everyone who supports the channel in this way, I'm extremely grateful, and I hope it helps you pass your exam. Leave comments in the below on what you would like to see in the future. We're hoping to roll out a podcast where we introduce guests and people who have landed their first job in tech. Um, 
just to kind of provide insights on the different pathways and ways to break into the field. Mm -hmm.